Time now to check the political stories that caught our eye this week. Let's start with Chuck Hagel. The former senator was on the hot seat at his confirmation hearing to be the next defense secretary. He surely was on the defensive, it seems. Listen to this. I don't think there was a letter that I can recall. I don't recall the event. I don't recall that. I regret referencing the Jewish lobby. I regret uh, saying that. I regret that I used those words. Not the term I should have used. I should have said pro-Israel lobby. I should have used another term, and I'm sorry. I uh, uh, misspoke. Joining me as they do every week, CNN contributor Maria Cardona and Amy Holmes, anchor of The Real News on The Blaze. Good morning to both of you. Good nice morning. morning. Nice to see you both. Um, so, Maria, were you surprised at Hagel's performance? Well, certainly I wouldn't call it the smoothest confirmation hearing performance ever. But what I was really surprised at, Randy, was the grilling, the really tough grilling that he got from his Republican colleagues, his former colleagues, one of his former closest friends, uh, Senator McCain. So while it wasn't the smoothest of performances on behalf of uh, Senator Hagel, I do think that Republicans really need to be careful here because it is looking very political because this is President Obama's nominee and mm. a former colleague of theirs and they are grilling him probably a lot harder than they grill John Kerry and probably a lot harder than what they're going to grill a lot of Democrats. So I think that the, the that he will get confirmed. The White House is pretty confident he will get confirmed. Uh, he shares a lot of President Obama's views. A lot of the questions focused on Iraq, a, a war that has ended, and not on Afghanistan, which is where a lot of questions yeah, have been that, focused that has on. been some of the criticism that it was uh, looking backward mm -hmm. instead of looking yep. forward. And as far as McCain goes, they got into it over that surge um, right. in Iraq. Um, but does, and the surge of the troops in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, but Amy, does the former Republican senator, I mean, does he have enough support? do you think to get the job well randy that here uh, chuck hagel's hearing i think inept would be a generous word to mm. describe it and of course they're going to pour through the senator's statements and his positions to discern and ascertain his judgment on really crucial crucial matters facing our country in terms of national security i mean you know the, we want the sharpest knife in the drawer at the, the top of the pentagon that's sort of you know the job description he's not going to department of interior but in terms of whether or not republicans will vote to confirm him democrats just need to hold together and get five republicans to confirm him and he should be able to become the next secretary of defense but there are some grumblings among republican senators that they may consider putting a hold on his nomination so that they can extract more answers from the administration on the issue of Benghazi, that this could be some leverage to get to the bottom of that debacle and understanding better the administration's timeline, their position on it, since they didn't get straight answers from Secretary, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I think if they do that, Randy, it would be a big political mistake and the perception would he be wasn't very negative for that. the Republicans. Exactly. Or any, any single senator can put a hold on a nomination. It's been done before. But in terms of actually yeah. voting down, on his it nomination. Would be a bad move. That hasn't happened to a senator since John Tower, so I don't see that yeah. happening. Um, let's talk immigration and gun control. Both were big this week. A partisan group of eight senators unveiled their plan for immigration reform. Uh, it included better border security, a path to citizenship, and then later in the week, the star studded gun hearings. So I I'm curious what you think. I mean, which has a better chance of getting passed at this point? Comprehensive immigration reform or, or some sort of gun control, Amy? Well, we've already seen Democrats coming out against, say, the assault uh, weapons ban. Mark Pryor, the Democrat from Arkansas. And as we've discussed on the show before, you have six Democratic senators in red states that Mitt Romney won up for re-election in 2014. So this comprehensive uh, gun legislation that you're mentioning probably is unlikely to get through some narrower uh, policy positions where there's broader agreement. For example, you know, the uh, doing background checks on right. all guns and a gun sale loophole and so forth. Comprehensive immigration reform, you know, that depends, I suppose, on the House side. The last time we did immigration reform under George Bush, the Senate was able to put together a bipartisan deal. My former boss, Bill Frist, worked on that very hard, and he was able to get bipartisan buy-in. The question now is, will House Republicans feel that political pressure to get a deal done? Yeah. And I think the politics are shifting, and that, in fact, we might see some movement there. Maria, your take? I actually think that the the senators and and our elected officials can 
walk and chew gum at the same time. So I think we'll be so, there will be some action on both. I agree with Amy that on the on the gun control, it probably will be narrower, probably focused on universal background checks and maybe still an, uh, a ban on assault weapons as well as the, the the large magazine clips. I think there's a lot of agreement on that. In terms of immigration, I think that it will get done. There's certainly huge uh, pressure from a political standpoint for Republicans to understand that this needs to get done, that there needs to be a, a pathway to citizenship. I know that's a big sticking point yeah. for Republicans. But I also think we should focus on pieces that both Democrats and Republicans and majorities of Americans agree with. And, and I'll mention one, and that is the focus on high tech workers and the focus on making sure that uh, American students have the tools that they right. need to graduate in the, in the high tech tech fields. It's All called right. the STEM fields. Let me jump in here because I want to ask you uh, quickly, both of you, um, that there could there could be a new name in the race for New Jersey Senate 2014. I'm sure you're aware <laughs> of that name. Geraldo Rivera yeah. says that he's considering a run. Senator Geraldo, do you like the sound of that, Amy? <laughs> well, uh, he certainly would be a very colorful character in the United <laughs> States Senate. I would look forward to his Senate floor speeches, Can his you press imagine? conference, <laughs> being in the press gaggle there. Um, I just hope he's not looking for Al Capone's uh, uh, tomb or <laughs> <laughs> bank vault. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it would be hilarious. Look, you know, so far it's been the House Republicans have had, had that has had all of the crazies and and all of the circus type of candidates uh, and 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 elected officials. So I think. I think it's the Senate's turn, so why not? I think you're putting him in that category. Am I reading, am I reading <laughs> wrong? Yes, I am. Geraldo crazy? <laughs> okay. Just, just yes, I am. Just crazy like a fox. <laughs> All right. Nice to see you both. Have a great, great Saturday. Maria Cardona Thanks and you. Thanks so much, Randy. You too. See you next weekend.